COVID-19 lockdowns and restrictions have been in place in Canada for more than a year. There's only one word that can really describe what this pandemic has been like. Unprecedented situation. Unprecedented, 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 an unprecedented global pandemic. The pandemic brought normal life to a standstill, but it sent the news cycle into overdrive. To keep up with the avalanche of COVID updates, Canadians tuned into government press conferences, live streams, and video updates more than ever before. This is a month-by-month -month look at the first year of the COVID-19 pandemic in Canada. Our government will be creating a billion dollar COVID-19 response fund. A window to flatten the curve of the epidemic is narrow. We all need to act now. Effective immediately, the Emergency Management Cabinet Committee has approved my recommendation that students no longer attend classes in schools or post-secondary institutions until further notice. We will be denying entry to Canada to people who are not Canadian citizens or permanent residents. Let me be clear, if you're abroad, it's time for you to come home. Alberta is declaring a state of public emergency. Both Canada and the United States will temporarily restrict all non-essential travel across the Canada-US border. How long do you think social distancing and having people work from home will be in place for? Uh, we've heard anything from weeks to months. Enough is enough. Go home and stay home. The Canada Emergency Response Benefit will provide $2,000 a month for the next four months for workers who lose their income as a result of COVID-19. A 14-day quarantine will be mandatory for all Canadians returning home from abroad. We are working, I would say, 24 hours around the clock trying to procure equipment in a global situation where equipment is extremely tight. We are going to be in some form of having to monitor and prevent transmission of this virus until we have a vaccine. We now have 74 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in continuing care facilities, and I expect that more will be confirmed in the coming days medical masks uh, right now, as you've just heard about the um, challenges with supplies, um, that they must be uh, preserved for our uh, health workers and others who are looking after patients. In the next 48 hours, we will be receiving a shipment of millions of masks by a chartered cargo flight. If people want to wear a mask, uh, that is okay. It protects others more than it protects you. How this actually plays out how many people are infected, how many die, and whether we overwhelm our healthcare system, all of that depends on us and our choices. Try to stay at least six feet away from other people outside your home. Stay at home for two weeks if you're sick or have returned from outside the country. And wear a covering over your nose and mouth if you're going into a crowded area. Unfortunately, given the outbreaks in long-term care facilities, we will expect to see more reported death as the days uh, go on. After three weeks of my family living up at, uh, at Harrington uh, and me working here, I uh, went to join them for, for Easter. Uh, we continue to follow all the instructions from public health authorities. Today, I'm asking every available physician, generalist or specialist, to come and help us. We now have uh, up to 28 employees who have tested positive for this virus. It's a chicken processing plant. We don't have any evidence uh, that COVID-19 can be spread from uh, meat. Their elderly parent, and they put their hand up against the window. That's heartbreaking. Now we are reopening, especially outside of Montreal. We uh, uh, recommend strongly to the people to wear a mask, but it's not obliga obligatory. We're getting thousands of people back to work. We've laid a solid foundation for our economic reopening and recovery. We will enter stage one. 
in the reopening of our province. In discussions with the Premier, we feel it's the right time to talk about more opportunities for social connection. One household can have a close connection with one other household who is part of what they determine their immediate family. The members of the Canadian Armed Forces wrote a report detailing dreadful conditions at long-term care homes in Ontario. Soldiers had witnessed cockroaches, rotting food, seniors left in soiled diapers, and cries for help ignored for lengthy periods. Canadians right across the country are uh, joining together and standing up to uh, speak out clearly about the systemic discrimination that has existed for far too long in our country. And I look forward to continuing to see thousands of Canadians protesting peacefully right across the country. Listen, I think it's people's uh, a right to express their support. Um, there are ways to do it uh, more safely. Uh, people still do need to uh, uh, keep physical distance, uh, make sure that they bring with them hand sanitizer, uh, for example, um, and I think uh, bring a mask. Our collective hard work is paying off. It is encouraging that we are observing declines in case counts across all age groups in Canada. As of July 3rd, you'll be able to move in and around Atlantic Canada without uh, the self-isolation of 14 days. For anyone outside of Atlantic Canada who decides they're coming into Nova Scotia or the rest of the region, they will, sell, they will have to still self-isolate for that 14 days. We've slowed down the progression of the virus significantly, and we're now seeing parts of the economy reopen. Mask will be mandatory in all closed public places. It seems that the, the vast uh, majority or the, the increase in proportion of cases is among what we call young adults. Alberta's K-12 education system will reopen for in-class teaching this September and 750,000 students will be able to return to school. The main objective is getting vaccines to Canadians as fast as possible that are safe and effective. All publicly funded elementary schools will be reopening province-wide in September, five days a week. As of this morning, the COVID Alert app is ready to download through the App Store on your phone. We're going to have to manage this pandemic, uh, certainly over the next year, but certainly maybe you know, planning for the longer term of the next two to three years. This morning, the CFL announced that it has canceled its 2020 season. They are looking forward to bringing the league back in 2021. We have 193 schools and we have uh, at the primary and secondary level about 80,000 uh, students that start school today, finally. People should expect to come across cases in the school year, because this is in inevitable. Today, I can announce that the Government of Canada has signed two new agreements with Novavax and Johnson & Johnson to reserve millions of doses of the vaccines they're developing. The vaccine research and development process in usual times takes more than a decade before they are approved for use for Canadians. Canada and the world cannot wait 10 years for COVID-19 vaccine. Thanks to decades of research in vaccine development and advances in technology over the last 20 years, organizations in Canada and around the world are able to expedite the vaccine development process. Effective today, all nightclubs and all standalone banquet halls are ordered closed. Starting tomorrow in Toronto, Peel Region, in Ottawa, outdoor gatherings will be restricted to a maximum of 25 people and indoor gatherings will be restricted to a maximum of 10 people. We will throw the book at you if you break the rules. Today's numbers, they're deeply concerning. And our health officials are telling us that Ontario is now in the second wave of COVID-19. When the Prime Minister says in March that rapid testing is Canada's priority, we should be rolling out hundreds of thousands of rapid tests today, Madam Speaker. That's right. Today. I woke up this morning, I was surprised by my uh, team uh, that uh, 
uh, the President and the First Lady had, uh, had tested positive. The Government of Canada has signed a new agreement with Abbott Diagnostics to purchase a total of up to 20.5 million antigen rapid COVID tests. I would like to remind Canadians to consider a virtual celebration this Thanksgiving. Virtual dinners, although less appealing, uh, rather than an in-person gathering can make a difference in reducing the spread of COVID. Will the Prime Minister commit clearly that that vaccine will be freely available to all Canadians? We deeply cherish our universal health care system and that means that things like life-saving vac vaccines are free for Canadians. My family will not uh, be going trick-or-treating this year because in Ottawa uh, and in Ontario, in uh, red zones like Ottawa, uh, they are not, uh, not encouraging or not uh, recommending trick-or-treating. We are in an unprecedented global pandemic that really sucks. Uh, it's tough going through this second wave. If you are a household considering making a major purchase, uh, if you're a business considering investing, uh, you can be confident that interest rates will be low for a long time. As of today, Nunavut has 70 cases of COVID-19. There are eight new cases today in Alvet and two new cases in Rankin Inlet. We need you all to make sacrifices now to protect our communities. We have a secured access to a broad range of vaccine candidates. Indeed, uh, Canada is one of the countries around the world with the very best portfolio of potential vaccines. I mean, from where I'm sitting, anywhere outside of the Atlantic bubble, uh, the Atlantic jurisdictions and the territories, um, you know, fires are burning in so many different areas. And right now is the time to get those under control. Effective Monday, November 23rd at 12.01 a.m., Toronto and Peel will be moved into lockdown. If all goes according to plan, we should be able to have uh, the, uh, the majority of Canadians vaccinated by next September. Our economy can get fully back up to speed only once we have the virus fully under control. The four vaccines that Health Canada is looking at right now, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Moderna and AstraZeneca, uh, are all undergoing a process uh, that, air, uh, that uh, Health Canada has accelerated, but is ensuring that we're not cutting any corners. With the numbers we have, it's unrealistic to think that we'll be able to change the situation in time for Christmas. I'm announcing that gatherings in red zones won't be allowed for Christmas. Right now we need to save lives. If you don't think that COVID's real, right now you're an idiot. I'm the guy who's stealing Christmas to keep you safe because you need to do this now. You need to do the right thing. This is not the time to, to plan large family gatherings, whether it's for for Christmas or New Year's or other parts, uh, other holidays through this uh, this next period of time. Let us remember, at the beginning, there will be smaller amounts of vaccines uh, because we are both uh, standing up our delivery mechanisms, but also because manufacturers are limited in what they are able to produce for this vaccine. On Wednesday, Health Canada approved the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine as safe and effective. We have been the first people in Canada to be vaccinated this morning and uh, now here in Montreal. Everybody has asked, I'm sure Minister Dubé and I and all ministers of health around the country, when will it be normal again? This is a really important tool to getting back to normal. Ontario will enter a province-wide shutdown starting at 12.01 a.m. on December 26th. If people don't follow public health rules now, we could be in for an even more difficult winter than we're already going to have. I uh, wanted to take this opportunity to again unreservedly apologize for my decision to travel during the holidays. Um, I know that I disappointed a lot of people. I hope people appreciate I've disappointed no one more than myself. In recent weeks, the pandemic has worsened around the world, including here in Quebec. 
starting next Saturday, there'll be a curfew from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Today, we are announcing that we will be tightening our border with New Brunswick. Effective tomorrow at 8 a.m., everyone coming into Nova Scotia from New Brunswick will have to isolate for 14 days. This Thursday, a stay-at-home order will take effect across the province. Unless it's essential reason, getting food, medicine, visiting the doctors or exercise, going to work, you must, you must, I'm going to repeat that, stay home. It's the law and it will be enforced. We now have four confirmed cases of the UK variant in British Columbia. We've also identified our first case of the South African variant. And you know, right now we are uh, the highest in Canada in terms of our active cases. And we are also uh, the second highest in Canada in, in terms of our average cases over the last seven days. Deliveries to all countries receiving Pfizer doses made at the European facility will be temporarily reduced. This includes Canada. The government of Canada, along with the provinces and territories, have engaged with Indigenous leadership across the country based on their input. Adult Indigenous peoples will have been prioritized among the first groups to receive the vaccine. That small group of British Columbians, like those who travel to another jurisdiction to bump vulnerable people out of the lineup to get a vaccination. That is not the type of behavior the vast majority of British Columbians would expect. The government and Canada's main airlines have agreed to suspend service to sun destinations right away. We will be introducing mandatory PCR testing at the airport for people returning to Canada. Travelers will then have to wait for up to three days at an approved hotel for their test results at their own expense, which is expected to be more than $2,000. Through our voluntary airport testing pilot program, we've already identified five variant cases. We're so pleased to be moving forward with Novavax. The production facility should be completed uh, this summer, uh, and once certification is made, we should then be able to start producing uh, the vaccines here in Canada. There is um, the UK variant of COVID-19 in our province. As of today, we have identified eight variants of the British strain in Quebec. We've decided to reopen certain activities starting February 26. This will allow parents to do activities with their children during March break. We are on track to receive two million doses of the Moderna vaccine before the end of March. The lockdown right now, especially given what we are dealing with in terms of the UK variant, is essential, critical for containment. This morning, Health Canada authorized the AstraZeneca Oxford COVID-19 vaccine, as well as the Serum Institute of India's version, Covishield. We expect uh, all Canadians to be vaccinated by the end of, uh, of sep uh, September uh, for those who want it. We're about to have much more vaccine in the province than we expected. Today, our seven-day average for new cases is 141. That's the lowest level in nearly four months. There's over 3,600 variants of concerns now uh, identified in Canada. Vaccines uh, are just accelerating. It's great news, but we've got a long ways to go. So under these circumstances, when these variants uh, are accelerating, it's a really sort of precarious time for us.